Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. So um, I welcome you. And uh, we have two of our board members uh, joining today. One is not available. So uh, Dr. Brophy, the chairman, the chairperson of the uh, board, uh, is joining us um, uh, via Zoom. So um, I would uh, turn the uh, meeting now to the chairperson, Dr. Brophy. Okay, so thank you. I'd like to call the meeting of the Board of Health uh, for uh, November uh, to order. Uh, so the uh, first item on the agenda is the minutes from our September board meeting. Um, any um, edits or um, changes to the, to the document? I don't see any. Okay, so hearing none, a motion to approve? <clears throat> Approved. Thank you. Okay, uh, second item on the agenda is a request uh, from business owner, Mr. Patel, to relocate his tobacco license uh, from a store at 200 Westgate Mall to 739 Belmont Street, Unit 743. Uh, Mr. Patel, are you on? Yes. 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 Okay. And um, now, um, um, Council Nisrela is representing the client is also uh, has joined. Okay, great. So is there anything you'd like to inform the, uh, the board about? Yes, uh, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Brophy and Mr. Fisk. The, uh, uh, this is Philip Nestrella representing Mr. Patel. Just as a by way of a brief background, uh, Mr. Patel had immigrated to this country a little over 20 years ago and has been working every day since that. Uh, he was fortunate enough to um, purchase a unit at the Westgate Mall, 200 Westgate Drive. And I think as Brocktonians, we're all aware of the vitality that that particular mall had. In fact, it was one of the first strip malls in the state. Uh, and he did very well. He did, he did well in his business over the years. The last six or seven years, he's seen a trickling, decreasing his business and which is attributed and related to the vitality of the mall in general. This is well before the pandemic had come to uh, rise. And as we again know, the economy in that mall has gone, has spiraled downhill to the extent that uh, the foot traffic that he once relied upon uh, would come in by way of Sears, Macy's, Best Buy, all of those major retailers are gone. The place is empty. And I went to visit the store. I went to see the surroundings. And on many days and many times of days, like a ghost town. The bottom line is, as it spirals downhill, Mr. Patel is also uh, spiraling downhill with his business. And he is uh, maybe doing 120th to 130th of what he used to do. And he's in grave fear of going out of the business that he has worked for over 20 years. Uh, in recent months, we had communications with uh, uh, Ms. Vanessa Myhos, who is the owner of the uh, plaza that we spoke about. And what we would like to do is move the business from where he is now over to uh, a plaza that has more visibility, more traffic. Uh, I, I feel somewhat um, with mixed feelings about leaving them all but everybody has jumped the ship and it's basically now like a Titanic. Uh, he doesn't want to, does not want to wait for him to go completely under and out of business because the, the economy and the vitality of that mall has gone under, uh, has, has spiraled downhill. They've been talking about renovating it and doing different things that have never happened. And the handwriting is pretty clear and on the wall. We have a uh, rather tight schedule with Ms. Myhos to sign the, um, the agreements for a, a leasing. We would like to get that underway as soon as we, we could. Uh, in turn, we would appreciate the blessing and consent of the, of the board to allow us to transfer his business to Belmont Street. Great, thank you. So uh, can I ask, are there any issues with zoning around this or are you, um, have you gone through that and things are- uh, I do not believe there are any issues with zoning. Okay, there great. are other retailers in that particular area. It's, it's a it, it, go ahead, Doc. Go ahead, Doc. Go ahead, Mr. Fisk. Yeah, it's it's just a, a shame to see the the mall the way it is, and I can understand the Patel family's always been great to Brockton in their ventures and always have been uh, 
up aboard and uh, you know, I, I wish them the best if it's not doing there, you know, right. being a businessman myself, you got to do what you got to do. And I, I certainly see no problem with it. Right. And, um, and I understand there's been, never been an issue with the, uh, with this business at the, at the mall. I mean, nothing has ever come before the board before right. uh, regarding this. And uh, uh, Dr. Monsoor, there's no issues uh, regarding the, um, the current uh, uh, Board of Health uh, documents concerning uh, the license, because this is an existing license. It's just a change of location. This is not a new license. Is that correct? That is my understanding and nothing else, just a change of location or physical location uh, right. so that we allowed to uh, move the, the, the store using the uh, standing license, tobacco license. Right, so all that they have to do is notify the board of the change of location in the, in the license, is that correct? Correct. Correct, okay, great. Yeah, seeing that I have no, uh, no issue with this as well. So uh, the, the, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the, if there's any, um, any other issues, Mr. Fisk, um, from your end? No, I, I just wish them the very best. I'm just sorry that they had to move out, but uh, I wish them the very best in their new location. Uh, mm -hmm. I also wish you the best. And so, uh, so can I have a motion to approve uh, the change of uh, location of this um, tobacco license? I, I make a motion that we accept it as uh, they would like. Okay, all in favor, aye. Aye. Uh, the motion passes. So thank you for bringing this to the board. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All the best to you. Thank <laughs> you okay. Enjoy your new location. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The um, next item on the agenda are the statistics on COVID for the city. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Like yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I sent you the numbers that I had as I prepared the um, the agenda on on Tuesday morning. Uh, so the slight variation in the numbers um, since we update the numbers daily. So the number that I gave you for the uh, second, which was um, uh, Tuesday, the 209, which was the, the total um, uh, cases for that day, uh, currently they are at um, 198, the active cases as of today. And the um, second number, which is the um, um, cumulative cases, which was uh, 16,537 on Tuesday, as a, at present it is 16,582. Uh, the death, uh, 448, it remains as is. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, with the uh, statistics. And then I also sent you, I, I don't know if you received that, but there is a, another dashboard that um, Dr. Herman um, uh, puts together for the mayor uh, and for the uh, entire city and shares with DPH. And so we have access to that also. I um, send that to you earlier today for just for your edification. So. I don't know if you had that. Yeah, so I, yeah, I took a look at that today. And we're still running yeah. a bit higher on the percent cases than the state. We're still in the two, uh, uh, but, uh, somewhere in the twos. Is that correct, uh, uh, positive cases? Positive 2 cases. Yeah, 2.74 positive cases per, uh, I mean, for the, um, over the people, um, I mean, in the population in Brockton. Yeah. So. And I, I want to congratulate you and the staff at the Board of Health for the um, vaccination update of uh, the, having 78% uh, of those eligible for vaccination within the city, 64% uh, plus uh, that are fully vaccinated and another 13% that are, have at least been partially vaccinated. So that's quite an increase. And I know it's taken a lot of work on the, the part of the Board of Health and others in the city uh, and healthcare facilities. Uh, but it's nice to see uh, the rate at this uh, at this level. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I congratulate you. So. Yeah, they've done yeah. a great job. Great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Without you, without your help, we couldn't do it. There is a lot, uh, many other de um, departments or staff that contribute to making it happen. So I cannot take the credit all to myself. <laughs> great. And now you're going to uh, fill us in on the vaccination program now that's going to be you're going to be undertaking regarding the boosters. Yes, we currently have um, 
a partnership with DPH where the partnership continues. Um, so currently, um, Brewster has been retained as an administrator uh, to uh, vaccinate at the Shaw Center, uh, which is considered, which has been um, showcased as a regional site. By regional site, uh, it doesn't belong to just people in Brockton. So uh, people throughout the region can come in uh, and get the booster or first or second dose of the other vaccines. So it became official last week um, or the 26th of October uh, and continues. So it's five days a week, uh, Monday, Tuesday through Saturday. The idea or the, the vision is to make it seven days a week. Uh, based upon the uh, demand. So hopefully the demand will, will um, be there and they can expand to seven days, but presently it's five days, uh, Mon I mean, Tuesday through Saturday and Tuesdays, tu Tuesdays and Wednesdays, it opens from 12 noon to 8 p.m. Thursday, Friday, Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and the, also the vision is DPH envision um, um, vaccinating up to a thousand people per day. We, we're quite far away to, to get there, but uh, so far uh, we are under way under a hundred cases per day still. So how do folks sign up for this? Is there a website or how do they make the appointments to, um, you know, cause this is something we should uh, obviously make people aware of. Um, yes. Um, Brewster Ambulance has a link. It is posted on the city website also, and it is a link that was generated by DPH. So anybody looking for a regional site, if they go on DPH uh, vaccination site, they will find it. If they go to Brewster, they will find it. And if they go to the city website, the link is there uh, where people can sign up to um, get vaccinated. Um, they also accept walk-ins, um, but they in greatly encourage people to sign up. The reason being that uh, by fear of uh, if the numbers, once the numbers kick in, uh, then if people don't sign up, we might end up having huge lines. And so they want to discourage that. So they greatly encourage people to sign up to be able to uh, get vaccinated, but they do not turn, um, away anybody who walks in. In fact, there is one additional uh, piece of news that um, came in just today. Last night, Governor Baker has approved, um, the, has uh, opened the, um, the floodgate to allow Massachusetts to start vaccinating kids, five years old, five to 11 years old. And this morning, DPH acted on that. And as of, Tomorrow, um, Brewster has been authorized to administer uh, vaccines to five years old, uh, five plus, I mean, five years old and older at the uh, Shaw Center. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I heard that uh, on the news today. And it's a lesser dose, isn't it, too, for the children? It's a, it's a third of the adult dose. Now, right. do we have that now? Um, Brewster already received that. We haven't received that yet at the Board of Health, but um, there is a demand to um, get it to continue to serve as uh, a um, uh, repository or a place where um, local providers can come and get the supply. I see. Great. Great. That's wonderful news. So wonderful. Great. So. Thank you. But we will also continue to vaccinate at the uh, Cape Verdean Association uh, because sometimes um, other locations allows people to have more options. Okay. So the Board of Health will continue their vaccinations at that site as well. So. Yes, and possibly at other locations where people uh, may not be as mobile to um, uh, travel to the um, um, Shaw Center. Right. So. Okay. 
No, that's great. To, to, you know, it's important to go out to the community because you're right. Some people don't have the ability to get to the uh, to the larger centers. Uh, to the may not be able to get up to the high school so uh, region. So that's mm -hmm. great. Any other questions or issues? Um, also, well, okay. Um, no, that's basically. Well, we had a meeting a little earlier today uh, with uh, the school committee. So we're looking to see how to also make vaccines available to, um, to, this, to the schools so that the kids could get vaccinated there while they're on, in school. But um, the main um, providers right now, as the PH sees it, includes um, pediatricians or um, local providers, um, pharmacies, health centers. So those are the three main um, institutions that will have access, that can have access to um, the kids' vaccine if they so desire. Okay. So currently you can't do it in the schools as we stand at this point? Um, well, if we have the, if we have the, uh, the supply uh, and then the people to administer it, yes. Yeah, okay. All right. I see. <laughs> Right. So, and um, if there's no other issues with that item, move on to the next items of the partnership in health. Um, yes, this is uh, we. I believe that we have uh, briefed the board already on the grant that was um, um, allocated to the board of health, and so we need to hire uh, some staff to continue to do contact uh, COVID contact tracing, case investigation. Uh, because um, PIH, which is the actual arm of DPH or under DPH that was working uh, with the local boards, uh, will phase out at the end of this month. And uh, by, the, by November 30th, the, beyond November 30th, they will no longer take um, cases. Uh, but officially, they will uh, close by December 17th. So, uh, by allowing the local board of health, boards of health to be able to hire a staff to do the work uh, is like a blessing, um, uh, um, you know, a uh, great blessing. So we are actively um, interviewing uh, applicants for epidemiological uh, posts as well as community health workers to help with contact tracing and case investigation and other uh, where and other needs as well. Great, wonderful. Okay. So the, the, the positions have been posted, and you're you're actively recruiting at the moment. So that's yes. Wonderful. In fact, we have done some interviews already, uh, and I have a few more applicants to interview, and um, uh, I need to review them ASAP and make some um, extend some um, offer to for second interview for people uh, that we wish to retain. Just out of curiosity, is this people that have to live in Brockton? Uh, great question. Thank you, yeah, Mr. Fitz. In, in, your, in fact, I didn't want to have my hands stripped behind my back. So I um, uh, requested the city councilors and finance department and HR, and they have granted me the authorization to um, um, contract with these individuals so that they can live anywhere um, and so the only thing is that they will not have benefits um, under that clause, but they will be able to, to uh, join Board of Health and work and, and um, work with us. So, so they're contract employees, not employees of the city of Brockton? That is correct. Okay. Any other questions? Not here. Okay. Then the uh, uh, flu vaccinations have started? Yes, flu vaccines. We uh, did our first round of vaccination at the uh, Council on, on Aging. And uh, we did uh, 80 uh, doses with them and then two um, clinics at the city hall for the employees of the city. They went very well. In, the mayor also got his shot. And so we are planning to 
have more uh, next week. And it seems that we may have to reorder because they, we have been placed on a quarter. Uh, so it, basically we need to use the supply and then once we use it and then um, order more. But uh, it seemed that, I mean, I already um, contacted DPH to let them know and hopefully we will get uh, another supply soon. Great, wonderful. Good. Good. And now the um, next item is the van project. So. Yes, correct. The, the, we actually got the van and it's been in operation. We've used it for our um, mobile clinics as well as the clinics that um, uh, Mia's office um, has uh, scheduled through John Messia, the constituent, uh, the director of constituent services. So it's been, it's been we've used it quite a bit and um, it's an investment um, that I think we will reap the uh, results, probably not next year, two years from now, but we can see in, you know, immediately. Um, I can see even just bringing the vaccines to uh, different areas of the city so that people have access to the vaccinations is wonderful. And having the van now, it's, uh, it's um, uh, you can carry things through the van, you can keep things refrigerated and supplies there. So that that's wonderful. So. Glad that you have it, and uh, I'm sure you will use it very well. So. Thank you. you have yeah. everything in, everything needed. You have everything that you need. Yes, we do. With the van, we do. Um, there are some other issues that are relating to the van, but um, uh, structurally, we are still uh, in a position where we need um, uh, a little bit more infrastructure, and so therefore, we may get back to you um, to. Um, uh, relay that to you in some way. Yeah, I, remember, I remember you mentioned that last meeting that there was something that you needed or there was a problem with it, something. <clears throat> yeah, I think um, that would basically what I'm referring to would take us that back down to um, uh, Roman numero nine. <laughs> oh no, um, uh, Roman numero 10. Um, which is basically restructuring, but beside restructuring, which I don't know all the details as yet, it seems that the plan is is, is in the making, but um, I just don't have uh, the updated information exactly how it's in evolving, but um, moving from Board of Health to Department of Health will require some some, uh, collaboration and some understanding how that will benefit the city and how we all can work to improve health. And so, therefore, um, I don't have all the details, unfortunately. Right, so the process is underway. I think Dr. Andres is going to uh, uh, speak with you as well about this and, uh, and ways that it has to be structured so that you get the most uh, um, benefits from uh, the structuring because how the, how, uh, Funds from the Mass Department of Public Health and various grants uh, will depend upon how these things are uh, funded. So, or, I mean, how they're structured. So, it's important to, to keep that in mind as the, as the city is uh, developing these plans as to how to how to uh, structure. Because uh, my understanding of a Department of Health is that it doesn't just encompass the Board of Health uh, or the activities of the Board of Health. It would encompass the areas uh, sort of community outreach services, homelessness. Uh, many of the things that contribute to public health, where there are other departments in the city that are involved in, in those uh, activities. So it's trying to bring those activities under a, a broader umbrella uh, and in a collaborative sort of manner. So uh, um, that's, that's my understanding reading this. But of course, Dr. Andres is the expert on this and uh, uh, I'll defer to his expertise uh, when we meet again and, and discuss this. So. Yes, thank you. I'm glad that um, the board is active on this too, because um, sometimes I feel isolated or um, uh, a lone voice in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wasn't there a meeting uh, a while ago that Craig did uh, uh, attend or something? There was something, I think, before the uh, council. Um, well, I, I, I appeared before the council at once, I mean, at one time, and then the um, uh, table, the meeting, pending uh, more additional information from the from the mayor. So I have not been called since. So, um, so that's what happened, okay. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So as far as we know, they're still working out the plans for how they're going to restructure. So correct. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So okay. Um, so uh, that covers item 11, I guess. Uh, um, so um, I, let's go back to the nursing vacancy. Yeah, the nursing is still there. We have one potentially um, 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 qualified applicant. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so I have not reached out yet. I was waiting to see how many more people will get because there is a protocol uh, in place where um, you do you reach out to people once you have once you close the um, the um, job announcement or the advertising advertisement. Uh, so for that matter, I delayed reaching out, but it seemed that I'm not getting as many applicants as possible. So I probably just jumped on it and then uh, see how uh, feasible that it, uh, uh, it is maybe if it's a good match, in other words, uh, between the Board of Health and this applicant. Great. Okay. So you're just waiting for the, the posting to end and then you'll look at what interviewing. So uh, you're lucky to have an applicant. There's a, a the, you know, difficulty in hiring RNs right now. There's a, there's a huge shortage. So, uh, <laughs> We have a good that we have at least an app, at least one application to to look at, and hopefully you'll get a few more before the posting closes. Closes. So. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So next is digitalization. Uh, so you're undergoing a IT um, upgrade. Yeah, it's a slow process, but we have in place um, a software that we are using to make some changes to. Um, um, up to date or to modernize, so to speak, to modernize the department because all, we have too much um, manual work to do, uh, right. especially when people are applying for a uh, permit, want to pay for a permit because up to now, people can only pay uh, by check or bring cash in, they cannot go online and apply and pay there. So um, it may take a while because we have, it's, the, the, the software is not really um, made available for all the services at once. So it's also a technical issue, but um, I'm glad that at least it's in, it's in, the, it's in progress. Oh, that's that's great to hear. I mean, the fact that people have to come in with checks uh, to pay for this is, uh, yeah. So it's uh, we're well behind the times. So people should be able to pay online. So um, so hopefully that's this will be. be yeah, it's, hopefully it's, this will be in place soon. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I guess next item is the health promotion and health education. Any use? Yes, this is something that we continue to do because. Um, Unfortunately, COVID is, but not even um, um, ten percent of health issues. Even though it, uh, because it is a pandemic, the um, microscope focuses on it. But we know there are a world of issues in the public health department to address: um, sanitation, uh, high blood pressure. Um, other infectious diseases, uh, you name it. But because COVID um, remains a threat, uh, so we continue to, to look be, uh, uh, around COVID. But um, we have been active working with other communities, uh, attending other meetings. For instance, um, um, I have been part of a, a behavioral health task force because um, Behavioral health is an issue, and it has in, the demand has increased with COVID because so many people remain at home or uh, are sequestered. Uh, that opens the door to other um, issues having to do with um, mental health. So we are actively um, participating in in discussions and 
over a month ago, I also participated in a, a substance abuse seminar or um, 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 a conference here um, with the in the faith-based community where it was held. And so we're looking at different avenues, how to really uh, listen and understand other issues, how they uh, affect uh, the residents in Brockton. So um, education becomes, you know, remains a key component to, uh, to the well-being to help um, uh, improve the well-being of the residents of the city. So I'm glad to hear that you're, you know, because COVID has sort of pointed all our attention in, in sort of health, uh, but health is not public health. Huh? Um, it's taken the whole healthcare system uh, looking, uh, you know, dealing with COVID. But in the meantime, uh, the things related to public health in the, in the background and the mental health problems that have come from COVID are, have been, it's clearly been exacerbated. But, you know, the opioid epidemic still continues. Homelessness is an issue. Um, you know, food security. These are all issues that uh, that involve uh, the Department of Public Health, and uh, it's nice that you're uh, you're open now and paying attention to these after we've gotten past this uh, the sort of uh, COVID crisis and, and uh, sort of preparing uh, to address the uh, the outfall of that in in many ways that have affected the city. So I'm glad that you're uh, paying attention to this, and it's, it's on the radar screen, and uh, hopefully is the re structuring of the health department that this uh, this becomes a, um, a you know the issue and the focus of uh, of the uh, of the, the newly formed health department so thank you thank you I think it's very valuable myself because a lot of that runs hand in hand together through the COVID and desperation a lot of people through that so it, it all runs together yeah it's been, been a very tough time the last year or two yes for many people so. yep. yeah in many ways. Um, all right, miscellaneous uh, resumption of in board meetings, uh, uh, in person meetings for the board. Yes, um, we have some meetings that are in person, but I know probably it's convenient for the board to do Zoom, but um, I am open to your suggestions whether or not you want to resume in person or you want to do that because I think um, we still have the option of having um, some meetings um, um, via Zoom or maybe some hybrid, but the board only has three members. So um, I am open to suggestions as to what your uh, pleasure would be, whether to uh, move in person or to continue um, 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 hybrid or um, remotely. So um, the open meeting law still allows for the um, virtual meetings are, uh, that are currently taking place. It's not an issue with the open meeting law. Is that correct? Correct. Um, City Hall opens to um, in-person meetings. The only thing is that mask is still uh, mandated. So people walk into the public buildings with masks and then um, some, sometimes people, as they talk, they drop the mask and then um, put it on once they, um, uh, they're done talking. So that's the protocol, I mean, well, that's the protocol right now. And, and are there limits to the amount of people that can attend the meeting? Um, well, we don't have large meetings indoor at the, uh, at over there, but I know for instance, we have the, um, um, head of departments meeting every, uh, Wednesday and that's over 20, I mean, 25, 26 individuals there in the, uh, in the GAR room. So, and then no. at, the, at, at the city council, the council chamber, they also receive a large number of individuals. So yeah. we can, I mean, it's up to the pleasure of the board. I know it, it makes no difference to me. I know that the two doctors there, you know, sometimes it's hard for them to get, you know, from work, uh, you know, down for the 4.30 meeting. But uh, all I yeah, know I, is that I, my, my sons would probably be glad to have me go because now they don't have to set this, they won't have to set this up for me because I couldn't do it myself. But, you know, it, it, uh, 
you know, uh, whatever the doctors, whatever is easiest for them. That you know, I I can go either way. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, for now, why don't we leave it as a uh, virtual meeting until we can? Um, Dr. Andres is on uh, as well because uh, you know, obviously, him uh, also uh, like today uh, being tied up um, uh, in things. It's it's difficult uh, sometimes to get out and out right. of town, down to to the city in time for the. For the meetings, and we are kind of stretched. We're all kind of doing overtime hours uh, at the moment, so uh, still in that phase of of uh, of, um, of um, uh, dealing with uh, issues um, related to the pandemic uh, that were kind of a little short-staffed and stretched, uh, at least in the healthcare system. And I'm sure Dr. Andre is at the uh, um, School of Public Health has also um, got a number of things probably on his plate as well. So. So why don't we, for now, leave it at a virtual meeting. We can rediscuss this at the at the next meeting, um, moving into the next year as to uh, um, whether we uh, move back to the in-person meetings. So. That's fine with me. All right. All right. Thank you. Virtually it will be. <laughs> okay. Uh, and <clears throat> any other items uh, that need to come to the board? Mr. Yeah, I just, I, just, I just wanted to uh, 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 tell that uh, I'll, I'll be out of the country uh, for the next meeting but my sons would have a phone number if case there was any vote or anything, they could reach me. <clears throat> Great. Okay. Okay, so December 2nd, you will not be there. Yes. So we'll keep the meeting for December 2nd. And if for some reason, um, you know, there's a difficulty, then uh, uh, we may yeah, have if to- If there's a vote or anything like that, I'd, you know, th they could reach me for a vote and I could call back. So. Okay, yeah. all right. Yep. Very good. If we don't have a quorum, we'll be, um, we'll be in contact, so. Okay. Okay, great. So um, with that then, uh, can I have a motion to call the meeting uh, to, to adjourn? Yeah, motion to uh, adjourn and uh, okay. happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Same to everyone here. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Okay. All right. Same All right, everyone. You. Stay safe. All right. Take care. You too now. Thank Bye you. Now. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you.